chemical reactions in the cell are not only governed by the laws of thermodynamics and are not only catalyzed by enzymes, they are also often linked into pathways where one chemical reaction will precede another and another and another and the whole thing forms a kind of production line so that starting from point A, you land up with a particular product that the cell really needs. This is just like a factory production line where you have to make something from lots of components and there are lots of steps involved in the manufacture. So we can define pathways and something that I'll call feedback control in the chemical reactions of the cell. And the point that you should get is that in order to get somewhere, in order to manufacture something in the cell, there are multi-step pathways comprising linked chemical reactions. And these pathways can be governed so that you can make more of the product or less of the product depending on the need of the cell really analogous, again, to the factory. The control of a pathway and how much of the outcome there is can be positive, in which case you'll make more along that particular reaction, or it can be negative, in which case you will make less. These controls are called feedbacks, and you can have positive or negative feedback. And then finally, pathways can contro be controlled by within the cell. They can also be controlled by external influences, just like in a factory. If one needs more cars because there's more demand from the consumers, the factory production line will speed up. In the cell, if there is something that happens outside the cell, this can give a signal to a particular pathway and that can speed up or slow down the pathway. So there can be external signals from outside the cell that control pathways. Let's look at a diagram of this. I've drawn you here a pathway that starts off with reactants labeled A, and those reactants can go down one of two pathways. They can either make B, in which case they will go on and make C, or they can make D and go on to make E. And those are, two, those are a splitting pathway. Each of those arrows, I should note, is governed by a particular enzyme. Each of those are chemical reactions. So that is your basic pathway that splits in my diagram. Here is an example of positive feedback. Let us say that when you get a lot of product C, you also need a lot of product E. And the way that this is controlled is that C, whatever the molecule is, goes and speeds up the production of D, which then um, gives you the increased production of E. You can also have a negative feedback where once you've got lots of D, you might want to turn off the other pathway. And so D might inhibit production of B and C with this feedback inhibition, okay, this negative feedback. This is what it looks like in a diagram, and we can add to it an external signal here I've shown you a signal coming from somewhere else that's going to speed up the production of B and C. What does it look like actually in the cell? This is the pathway diagram for phenylalanine, an amino acid. And these are all the different ways that phenylalanine 
is metabolized in the cell. All the different chemical reactions that lead to its synthesis and lead to its breakdown. And you can see that it is really complicated. This is a circuit diagram with both activation and inhibition components. And if we were to zoom out and look at the chemical pathways in the cell, the metabolic pathways in a cell shown in this kind of line diagram, we would fill the space with very complicated activation and inhibition pathways. The circuitry of the cell is really, really complicated. Good, so take a moment now and go and do an exercise on pathways so that you can practice the positive and the negative aspect of what pathways mean. <laughs>